Welcome back guys. First time on the surf since Mexico. Really excited for this episode because there's one thing that I'm really excited to share with you guys that I think could change the game when it comes to having fresh FG knot leaders on the beach whenever and it'll be really fast. So we'll get into that. And then also I got an app that I wanted to show you guys and then a new lure that I want to show you guys. There's a bunch going on. There's surf perch in the water. Our friends Bob, Leroy and Bruce are already fishing but I want to take this time to hang out with you guys for a little bit and show you what we got. And then also I'm going to share a few tips and products that I use on the surf that if you guys have been following you might have already seen but for those who are new to this channel it's probably a good idea to introduce you to some of these products. Let's go ahead and start with those. First product, casting glove. It's funny because there's a lot of people who don't believe in this, but it has leather on the fingertip and it allows you to not have that braid cut into your finger after the whole day fishing. As your fingers get soft from getting waterlogged, this really allows you to whip that bait out with a lot of pressure. Normally as your fingers get waterlogged, it's easier to cut. So a lot of people who have fished a long time know and have gotten cuts on their fingers. So that's really big. Again, in terms of products, I like carrying a mesh bag at my waist on a belt so that I can continue to put my fish in a certain area without having to go back to the truck or bury my fish in the sand and not lose my spot most importantly. So that's something that you're gonna see today. And then also, one thing that I'm gonna to use today that's really neat is you'll notice on this Real Ones hat, shout out to Be Flossy, actually, the sweater too. Go check out It Gets Real. He's a fisherman out of San Jose, does a lot of different fishing. But you'll notice on this hat, there's this button. It's called the Angler Bullet button. It attaches to an app and it'll actually track your whole day and track conditions and you can mark your fish mark your catches just by the push of a button if you push it once it'll mark that you caught a fish press it twice it'll mark a location where it's going to work the best on the surface it'll allow us to map out and see exactly where we were catching them seeing what holes but you could use it on a boat freshwater salt water but it'll keep track of all of your different fishing trips it'll take the whole trip map it out and keep a log and keep a log of temperature, wind and so forth. So it's a really cool angler button and you can actually get it at shopcarls.com. Retail, it's like 29 bucks, but the cool thing about it is they actually hooked it up with a code, hook to cook 10 at Shop Carls. You can do a free membership, but for members who use that code, you get $10 off. So you should be able to get these for under 20 bucks. That's a pretty good deal. So you guys should check it out. You could also do the free trial membership to Shop Carl's. See how you like it. There's a bunch of baits on there. Mostly fresh water, but a lot of stuff you could use in the salt water as well. So thank you Shop Carl's for that. Now, let's get into what happened and this game changer idea. It could potentially be game changer for those who like throwing FG knots. If you guys have been following the channel for a while, you know I love me an FG knot from 30 pound braid to 30 pound fluorocarbon leader. And Leroy let me borrow this reel and I wanna put an FG knot on it fast, but I'm already out here and I don't wanna waste that much more time. Let's rewind a little bit. Here's the reason why he's letting me borrow this reel. Oh, what the hell? Yeah, I lost a screw. Look at that, the screw came out. Right there. I know. And it's on the Vanford too. My Shimano Vanford broke while I was getting bait. This screw on that Shimano Vanford fell off. So if you guys know Shimano or anyone with Shimano, show them that and see if it helps with their R&D. But here's what I am talking about. So if you guys know how to do an FG, it is very labor intense in terms of a knot. Probably the, the most complex knot, but one that you could put a lot of faith into once you get it down. So what I did, and I, I really feel that it's pretty genius and I'm excited about it, is I 
pre-tied this FG knot at home because I didn't have a reel, but you can do a bunch of these and put them in a Ziploc bag. I'm really surprised that no one's done this yet, but maybe it's a good idea, maybe it's not. So that's something that we're gonna check out today. But I'm gonna take this braid that Leroy has. It's 30 pound braid, so it matches perfectly with what I have. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the tag end from his reel right here. You could either do a uni to uni knot on this, or you can do a blood knot. I'm gonna do a blood knot right here. But again, the reason I'm doing this is it's gonna be really fast compared to having to tie an FG knot right out here on the surf. So I'm gonna experiment with this and try to keep some pre-tied FG leaders with me and see if this works. It should, I don't see why it wouldn't, but I'm gonna do a quick blood knot on this. So that is a small diameter knot right there and I can cinch it down even more, but that's still gonna be less than my FG knot. So sliding through the guides will be no problem for this blood knot. And that blood knot is just above the joint of that FG knot that I made. So you have the FG knot to a braid to braid blood knot. Leave in the comments what you guys think of this idea. Hopefully it created some light bulbs for some of you who really like using the FG knot on the surf. And if you guys break off or snap your braid and you can't really tie an FG knot well on the surf or in the field, it's not a bad idea to have some pre-tied leaders like this. So that's what I'm doing today and experimenting with. Leave it in the comments if this is something that you guys are gonna try or if this is a solution to something that you've already like struggled with because I used to have to carry some knot pullers, a lighter with me when I would go out. But anyway, hopefully this is a good solution. But I just cut the little tag ends right there and we should be good to go. All dialed in. And then the biggest benefit in my mind of the FG other than it being clear line versus braid is that since it's not super limp compared to braid, your lure is going to foul up a lot less. And then uh, last but not least, in terms of products, you know I like my Kalisas, but a friend of mine just started a company and he's got these Battlestar 115s and we're gonna try them out today as well. Nice thing is our boys are already throwing Kalisas. Depends if those fish are there, but it'll still be a good to experiment with these bad boys right here. So we'll give them a shot. They're 115 millimeter. They are three quarter of an ounce, so they're heavier. They should cast pretty good. But here's the ticket. It dives deeper, but it floats. So this is something that you'll usually use when there's a lot more structure because if you bump into something, maybe get a little hung up. When you stop your retrieve, it'll actually slow float. So give it some time. If you're stuck, may maybe it'll float up and then you can bring it right back. So he's been doing really good on species down south like halibut and calico bass with this. But without further ado, I hopefully I covered everything from products and a couple tips that might help you guys out. Let's finally fish. Let's get out there. Let's go ahead and start this angler app. So there's my angler app right there. Go ahead and start that. Let me push this button to start a trip. Bluetooth is turned on. That's how the uh, bullseye tracker works. So the fishing tracker, start trip. And now it's going to record everything. The cool thing about this bullet is it just goes on my hat. It's waterproof and I can keep my phone dry and it'll still communicate. So I can just push a button when I catch one and then I can push a button twice if I mark a spot. Oh, Leroy's on a fish. Not a bad start, sir. A big one? If it is a bird, I don't know what it is. You got all three hooks on there? Yeah, no, two hooks. Two hooks? Okay, yeah. so it's not, it's probably not fouled, no. but it can be. Yeah. Alright, could be a first. It is, it's a toad, or it's, like you said, it's a foul hook coming in sideways. Oh, it's making a run. I know. That's why I'm wondering what the hell it is. Oh, it's a striper! Is it? Or is it a shark? Oh, 
It might be a striper. I don't know. It could be. It's probably a perch. It is a striper! <laughs> On a sardine glow! That's wild. Leroy, you got a striper. First fish of the day. <laughs> All right. That's a keeper for sure. Oh, yeah. All day. That's like a 20... 21? Yeah. Nice, fatty. Let me see. Hold it up. Let me get a picture of you. Three, yes. two, one. That's crazy. I was like, oh no, I don't think that's, that's it, buddy. I, was was like, heck yeah. I don't think that's a perch. I was like, he's fighting it too good. It's deeper over here. You were fishing right, over here. It, are you throwing deeper it back? Huh? Throwing it back? No. No. <laughs> no. You kidding? Veronica would kill me if I threw this back. Bleed it out and put it in the cooler. Let's go. Yeah, the way he was fighting it, I was yeah. like, man, that's. I kept on saying, striper, striper. Yeah. Because I, I seen the way he was fighting it. Throw I was right like, that ain't a perch. Right. That's not a perch. Throw it out here. Yeah, because when he started pulling drag, I said, either it's a big perch or he's foul hooked. Yeah, but. I saw its belly and I was like, oh, that's a big perch. <laughs> put that on the Angler app. You could actually add photos, but now it marked exactly what happened and it shows again it tracks you so that's kind of nice so far this lure feels pretty good the action feels pretty good i can feel it banging the bottom as i get shallower all right i think i'm gonna go back just because what leroy caught <laughs> i'm gonna go to the uh sardine glow kalisa because that's exactly what leroy caught that fish on i'll go back to this uh 115 later but uh, right now, since he caught that fish, I'm confident in the swimming depth. This might, striper tend to feed up if they see a silhouette right near the surface. So I'm gonna try with a higher presentation. This doesn't dive as deep in terms of the Kalisa versus the uh, Battlestar. The Battlestar is supposed to dive from three to, three to five feet. The Kalisa dives from two to, two to four feet, so. I'm gonna go that higher, I'm gonna target that higher water column with the Kalisa, see if there's another striper in the area. High tide is eight o'clock. Currently it's 7.30. So we're about 30 minutes until peak high tide. A question often asked is, when's the best time to fish for perch? Be two hours before? and two hours after high tide. So that four hour window is a good, a nice session. So we're reaching peak high tide in about 30 minutes. Oh man, that was so cool that Leroy got a striper. Man, that was a good chunky one too. Leroy's on another fish. Big perch. Leroy, you're back. You're back. That's a solid perch. Nice. Woo! Look at that. On the sardine glue. Man. That thing is giant. Came in sideways. I thought, oh man, it's another perch. Or another striper. That's a big one. Look at that. Woo! I'll take it. <laughs> Leroy, you're a you're an animal. So he took a quick break, but I think I'm going to go back to this. I mean, other than Leroy's fish, it's been a really tough bite. So far, the leader is holding up really well. The blood knots holding up really well, but here's that battle star. I think it really has some cool details on it. The gills have this, these like little holes that look really cool. Really nice shiny pattern, pink belly. It's really meant to target halibut in the places with lots of structure. But I went ahead, I removed the middle hook, and I put on some 4X strong size 4s. Pretty sure the ones that came stock on this were size 6s, but when you go with the 4X strongs, you can up a size. And then removing that middle hook should keep the bait the same weight and still keep it balanced. So we're gonna give it a shot. But I'll leave the link in the description if you guys want to check these out really cool design is this the cast we finally hook up right here is this the cast we finally hook up 
Is this the cast that finally hooks up? Is that up the right cast here? that finally hooks up? Is this right the cast here? that finally hooks up? Alright guys, so the main thing, that blood knot held up pretty well. Couldn't feel the difference on casting. I just wish I could have fought a fish today on that, but it's okay. The Battle Star, this thing casts well. I can feel the action. It's really good. So if you guys want to check that out, it's Vince Goes Fishing's lure, and the link is below. I'm sure we're gonna get bit one of these days on it. And then that angler app, it'll actually give us where I walked and the, the areas that I covered on this beach. So that's pretty cool to be able to track where you were, what water you covered. And uh, the cool part is a lot of times when you're fishing, the whole beach all looks the same. So if you're able to take a picture of the fish, like we did with Leroy, it'll give you the latitude and longitude of where that was. So hopefully the things that you learned in this video help you out, make you more effective. And I hope you guys are able to test out that pre-tying your leaders because it does take some time to tie a good FG knot to make sure it's nice and tight. When you're able to do a few of them at home and bring them with you and if you break off on the one that's on your rod currently, you could always tie something else on. Very easy with a blood knot or a uni to uni knot in terms of braid. And then uh, hopefully I get the screw back uh, for my reel and get that Banford back. But ultimately it was a good trip. Leroy ended up picking up that striped bass and that surf perch. But we're really excited to, to, to be able to fish the surf perch more. So if you guys are new to the channel and you want to continue to see this stuff, definitely subscribe, give this video a like. But overall conditions, the water was very murky. But that's because it really turned up the day before. The waves were really powerful. But if we continue a whole week of this type of fishing, the, all that sediment should settle down and the water will clear up and we'll be able to get some episodes with some good perch fishing. Thank you guys for watching. We'll catch you guys on the next one.